work. Yeah. Okay, good. Here we go. So right now we're going to take a look at some questions from the textbook. And we're going to start with question 12.17. So 12.17. And in this question, all we're asked to do is to classify each alcohol as being primary, secondary, or tertiary. This is a good problem because they just give us the name of the compound, and then we're expected to draw it. Oops. And then we're expected to draw it. And so I think that's some good practice. So we'll do this one, A. We'll do this one, two methyl, two methyl, cyclopentanol. All right, let's start with these two. Well, if you look at A, the name is 3-methyl-1-butanol. Let's start by drawing 1-butanol because that is our parent, right? 1-butanol is our parent. So if we have 1, when my, remember when my pen touches the paper or the computer screen or the iPad screen, that's carbon 1. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm going to number these. 1, 2, 3, 4. At carbon 1, that is where my alcohol is. So I'm going to draw my oxygen hydrogen bond here. So that's 1 butanol. But then on carbon 3, I have a methyl. So on carbon 3, I'm going to draw a methyl. I'm going to draw it down in an angle like that. If you want to write, you know, CH3, you can do that, but you've also got one here. So it's kind of redundant to do that. So I'll just leave it as a bond line structure. So there we go. 3 methyl, 1 butanol. Now, if we look at the carbon all carbon, that is this carbon right here, carbon number one, that carbon is a methylene. What do I mean by that? It's a CH2, isn't it? That carbon is attached to the oxygen. It's attached to this carbon here, and it also has two bonds to hydrogen. So when we want to classify this as being primary, secondary, tertiary, or quaternary, okay? And I guess quaternary doesn't count for alcohol. So primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohol. Um, all we have to know is how many bonds to carbon does the carbon all carbon have? So with that information, could anybody classify this for me as primary, secondary, or tertiary? Exactly. So this one is primary. Primary. Let's draw the next one. It's 2-methylcyclopentanol. A parent is cyclopentanol, so that's, we have five carbons in the ring. We have our hydroxyl here, I'll put it there. We're gonna number, the carbon with the hydroxyl is number one, two, three, four, five. And on carbon two, I have a methyl group. Same exercise, if I look at the carbon all carbon, how many carbons is it directly attached to? It's attached to one, two carbons, an oxygen, and a hydrogen. And so the answer is the carbon on carbon is attached to one, two carbons. So this would be a secondary alcohol. Secondary, okay? Which is abbreviated just like this. Primary is abbreviated like that. Let's try one more from that one. Let's do T butyl alcohol. When I see T butyl alcohol the t butyl stands for tert butyl so tert butyl alcohol that's a common name for an alcohol what do i start by doing i start by drawing a tert butyl group a tert butyl group looks like this i have a carbon with three methyl groups attached to it like this that's a tert butyl group we went over that in class and then i have my hydroxyl to make it terbutyl alcohol. Here's the carbon all carbon, and you can see that it's attached directly to one, two, three carbons. And so terbutyl alcohol is a tertiary alcohol. All right, hopefully that helped a little bit. Uh, let's see here. There's another one I wanted to do here. No, oh, I wanted to try. Question 12.26. This is question 12.26. 12.26A. Okay, and the question asks us it says, arrange the three alcohols in each of the following sets in order of increasing solubility in waters. 
So the first one was, so we have this alcohol and this alcohol. And then finally we have this alcohol. Okay, so why don't we call them? Why don't we call them A, B, and C? And we want to rank them in terms of least soluble, okay, soluble in water to most soluble in water. Can anybody tell me which one of these would be the most soluble in water? Yeah, B is definitely going to be the most soluble, won't it? Right? The reason why is even though it doesn't have the fewest number of carbons, if you look at A, A only has one, two, three, four, five carbons. B and C both have six carbons, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. However, the ratio of hydroxyls, the alcohol group, to carbons is higher in B than it is in C or A. And so B is going to be the most soluble of all these. Could anybody tell me which one would be the least soluble? Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be A by a long shot, right? It's got five carbons, but it's only got one hydroxyl. Whereas when we look at C, it has six carbons, but it's balanced up by the two hydroxyls. So C will be somewhere in the middle. Good. Okay, so we understand that. Well, what I thought we would do now is we would try naming some compounds, try naming some alcohols. So let's start with, and this isn't a particular number, I'm just going to make up some problems here. So I want you to try naming these ones. I want you to try to name that alcohol. And I want you to try to name this alcohol. So these two compounds. I'll give you a minute to look at both of these and see if you can come up with a name for both of these compounds. Yeah, if you've got a name, if you have a name that you think is right, just throw it up there. Throw it on the screen and then we'll evaluate it. Take a looky. Okay, well, let's get started. Sadie, thanks for putting up a couple of names there. Let's give the first one a try. You're definitely in the right vein. Um, we've got six carbons in the main chain, don't we? We have a six-membered ring. Now, if we just had a six-membered ring with a hydroxyl, that would be called cyclohexanol. All right, so this, go on, leave out that cyclo prefix. I'm going to number it giving the carbon with the hydroxyl number one, and then it would go two, three, four, five, six. And so this would be two, six, 
dimethyl, dimethyl cyclohexanol, like that. And the next one, you can see the longest carbon chain here goes from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is some kind of heptanol, right? Because it's got seven carbons in the longest chain. And our hydroxyl, is it carbon two? Okay, so it's some kind of two heptanol. And like Sadie said, at carbon three, we have an ethyl, right? We have a three ethyl here. And so this molecule is three ethyl, two heptanol. So Sadie nailed it. There you go. Perfect. And the only thing with this one is forgetting the prefix cyclo. So looks like we're doing pretty, pretty good on that. Well, let's give a couple more tries. Uh, let me just erase this one here. Uh, there we go. Okay. Let's try, try another one here. You know what? Instead of nomenclature, let's switch gears. Let's try question 12.52. That's one I was thinking about doing this. So question 12.52, it says, um, predict the products of the dehydration. So it says, draw the alkene products of the dehydration of the following alcohol. We're going to start with 2-butanol. If we take 2-butanol, Okay, then we treat that with an acid catalyst and we heat it up. Okay, I want you to draw the major and the minor product of the dehydration. And we're also going to try it for, we're also going to try it for this compound. This isn't D, but we're going to try it for this alcohol. Okay, same thing. We're going to treat it with acid and then we're going to heat it. Okay, I want you to remember Zeitz's rule. Okay, and if you need to go back and look it up, do that. But I'm going to give you two minutes. Give these ones a shot. All right, let's give the first one a try. So how do we do a dehydration reaction? We're going to end up forming water as a product, right? We're going to end up losing water from this molecule 
and we're going to form an alkene in the process. If we look at the carbonyl carbon, we're going to take the hydroxyl to form water. Then we also need a hydrogen. Where are we going to get a hydrogen? We look at the two neighbors. We have a neighbor here and we have a neighbor here. They both have hydrogens attached to them, don't they? This is a methyl CH3 and the other one is a CH. If I pull a hydrogen from the methyl, the CH3, then I'm going to end up forming water and I'm going to form my double bond at the end of the molecule like this. I'm going to end up with one butene. If I pull the hydrogen from this carbon, then the double bond will be here and I'll end up with two butene. Okay, those are my two possible products. Plus, of course, you're always going to form water. Could anybody tell me out of these two, which one would be the major product? Which one of those would be the major product? Would it be one butene or two butene? Does anybody remember Zaitsev's rule? Zaitsev's rule states that the major product is going to be the alkene that has the most R groups attached to it. If I look at one butene, I have two carbons, I have one, two, three hydrogens and only one R group attached overall. If I look at the double bond in two butene, I have one, two hydrogens and two R groups attached. And so two butene is in fact the major product. So this will be my major product and this will be my minor product. Let's do one more. Okay, let's try this example right here. The same rationale. I'm going to end up forming H2O, water. I have my carbonyl carbon. I have two neighbors. I have this one here that is a CH, and I have this one that is a CH2. If I pull a proton from the carbon that's highlighted in blue, I would end up with this alkene that looks like this. If I pull a hydrogen from the carbon that's highlighted in red, I would end up with this alkene. Could anybody tell me, would the red or the blue be the major product in this case? So the question becomes, which one of these is the most substitute? That's right, Sadie. It would be the red one, okay? This would be the major product. This would be the minor product. Again, if we examine the carbons in the double bond, overall this one has one, two hydrogens attached to it, two R groups attached to it. This one only has one hydrogen and one, two, three carbons directly attached to the double bond. And so it is the more substituted double bond. Therefore, it is the major product.